Oh, we can't can't hear you, David. No, David. David, there's no audio. Hello, David? Hello? I can hear you, John. Okay. Oh, okay. I hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you, David. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm going to go through that whole welcome spiel again <laughs> because I had the mic on mute, and that's uh, that's why we do this early. Um, so, again, I'd like to say uh, give a giant welcome to all of you that have joined us today. Thank you for coming and to learn a little more about the Anteater Leadership Academy. Uh, we're really, really excited to have you. If you have any tech problems whatsoever, you can contact John at UCI Support. He should be listed there on a panelist section on your right hand side of your screen and he was the one who was flagging me down telling me that they couldn't hear me so he will uh, very clearly help you out if you can't get audio or can't get video or whatnot he'll be happy to assist and without further ado let's go ahead and get started so I'm going to go and share the screen again let's restart this actually and let me turn off this webcam so I don't interrupt you and now I will share the screen perfect and so again this is the UCI Anteater Leadership Academy. And so before we get too far ahead, I first want to introduce who we are. So who am I, first of all? You saw me. Um, my name is David. I, was, I am a student affairs specialist here at UC Irvine. I actually graduated UC Irvine in 2014 as a computer game science major. And so many of you are coming to UCI. I was right there in your shoes just, well, now it's seven years ago, which isn't wild, but um, <laughs> the age is going by quickly. But I've been there in your position. I, I, I kind of understand the struggles so I hope to really, really kind of give you more information about why this program could be so beneficial to you from a student perspective. And also joining me today is Patricia Morales, or Patty. She is the Executive Director of Undergraduate Admissions. And so she has a very, very strong hand in, in the admissions process for UCI. And she's going to be here basically to um, make sure I don't say anything wrong and provide some, uh, some helpful information and insight as to uh, why this program is so beneficial to you. I just wanted to say good afternoon to everybody and welcome to our Anteater family. It's so exciting for me to be able to welcome in uh, the enrolling class after a year of uh, everything that you've done with application process and to get to this point. It's, it's exciting for myself and uh, everyone from my office as well. So to introduce to you this opportunity in this academy is something that I am personally very proud to share with you and we're hope we hope we can answer your questions today and just give you a better sense of what lies ahead. So I'm going to bring it back to David. All right, so let's get started. So I want to start off by asking, you know, why the Anteater Leadership Academy? A lot of you are probably wondering why I even introduced this program in the first place. And the answer actually is pretty simple. We had a unprecedented amount of interest in UCI this year. And so as a result of that, we wanted to make a program that provided a unique and exciting way to provide services and really just give an awesome experience to incoming students. And so really UCI has become a destination campus in a lot of ways. We had over 104,000 applications to UCI this year, which is an unreal number. We had over 100,000, which is crazy. So we wanted to make a program that is able to, again, cater to the needs of as many people as possible and provide this fantastic experience for them. And so the plan for today to talk about the Anteater Leadership Academy is this. We first want to talk about what your life will look like should you choose to join the Anteater Leadership Academy. What's going to be, you know, um, the similarities and differences from you would have if you did not choose to join the program. And then we'll talk about what else the Leadership Academy has to offer. What in addition to the normal student benefits will you get? And then lastly, we'll talk about what your next steps are. Say you're interested in our program. We want to give you the right steps in order to enroll if you want to take that route. 
And so, again, I want to first talk about what will your life look like in the Anteater Leadership Academy. And the short answer is pretty simple. It's going to be virtually the same as students not in the program. You'll find that a lot of if not the vast majority of things that you'll see in the program are going to be exactly the same as you would get as if you weren't a UCI or if, if you were not doing the program, so to speak. And so to break that down a little bit, you're first going to get the same academic progress you'd get as an incoming UCI student if you didn't do the program. And I see this question come up a lot in our message boards and our calls and our emails, and I want to assure you that your academic progress is not going to be delayed in any way, shape, or form. The, the, one of the biggest priorities, if not the biggest priority, is to make sure you are set up for success in the future academically by doing this program, right? And so again, your academic curriculum is taught by the same renowned faculty that you would have on main campus. And so these aren't just random courses that we throw in there taught by people we hired on the spot. These are the faculty that have been teaching students for years. They're going to be the ones that are giving the same type of academic experience that students not doing the program would get. So these are renowned faculty. They're the ones that are writing the textbooks that you're reading in class. Through this program, you're going to virtually complete your general education requirement slate. And this is what students not in the program normally do anyways. They oftentimes take a lot of general education requirements during their first year. And we, you're going to be in the same spot, if not in a better spot, than students not doing the program by taking the Anteater Leadership Academy and by enrolling into it. Even if it's, we even have a specific STEM track for you to take uh, where it, with a lot of science courses that'll knock out prerequisites for you. And so this is a really good opportunity to get those things out of the way. And especially if you're going to be taking them anyways, why not join us? And then lastly, again, this is important. We will not delay your graduation time. This is probably one of the main concerns I see is that students don't want to spend an extra couple quarters here, spend an extra money to stay at UCI. Please don't worry. This, is, this program is not meant to delay your graduation time. And as I mentioned before, you're going to be in the same position, if not a better position, as students who choose not to do this program. In addition to academics, you're going to have the same student resources available to you as if you weren't doing the program. And this can be broken down in the following ways. So as a student, you're going to be paying the same student fees that you would normally be paying. And because of that, the resources are going to be pretty much exactly the same. And so you'll see here that all resource centers are available to you. This includes things like the counseling center, the career center, the recreation center, or the, what we call the ARC, which is our gym, et cetera. All of these things will be available to you, you have full access to them during normal student hours, and you'll be able to utilize them to their, their biggest advantage. And so you're not an outcast. You're not someone who's going to be, you know, getting limited resources in any way, you are part of the UCI community and this shows it. All student life opportunities are also available to you. And so these include things like campus events, campus clubs and organizations, all the things that make UCI what it is and make your experience really the mo the, get the most out of your time at UCI, that is going to be available to you as well. And so you won't have any limitations on that. And then all student benefits, and these include things like student discounts. You also get access to free, you know, the, our free sporting events from our basketball team, our renowned volleyball team. You get, um, you know, better uh, prices on tickets for movies, Disneyland, et cetera. So you have a lot of things available to you as an anti Leadership Academy student. And again, because you're paying the student fees, all of these things are available to you as they would be normally. And I want to emphasize this. You're going to be an integral part of the UCI community. You are such, you are very, very, very important to the way UCI is shaped and grows. And not only that, but because of this program, you're going to be the future leaders of the UCI community, right? You, if you choose to do this program, are going to be a part of the inaugural year for this program, and, and you're going to be a big part of how it's shaped in the future, and your feedback is super important to us. And to be able to kind of say that, man, I, I made this program what it is, that seems awesome to me, and I hope it seems as awesome to you as it does for me. So that's a little bit of what your life would look like. So in summary, it's going to look the, almost identical to that of a non-leadership academy student. And you get additional benefits as a part of doing the program that I kind of want to segue into now. And believe it or not, that's our next section. So as a part of the program, you're going to get a are going to get a personalized academic environment that will really shape how you spend your next three years at UCI after this program concludes. 
The academic benefits include small class size, and so this is really cool. As it, one part of this program is that you're going to be a part of a small cohort, and these classes are going to be catered directly to you. As a result of that, your class sizes are going to be very, very, very much smaller than you would get on main campus. And so we're talking 40 versus 400 as far as the class size is concerned. And as, as someone who went through the 400 person classes, it can be really difficult to feel like you're a part of something at that point. You can just feel like one of the crowd. We want you to feel like you have a more intimate and more engaged academic experience, and this is going to be a big part in that. You're going to be taking classes in brand new facilities with cutting edge technology. And so many of you, not all, but many of your classes are going to be held in our Division of Continuing Education. And this is a state of the art facility with a lot of really awesome educational tools for you to use. And it, this is going to be really just a way to enhance your academic experience and take it to the next level. You also get personalized academic counseling. And so again, going back to the whole not knowing what to take and worrying about your graduation day thing, we're going to have academic counselors specifically available to our Anteater Leadership Academy students. And so we don't want you to feel like you're lost. We don't want you to feel like you're kind of wandering about. These, these counselors are going to be available to you at all times, and they're going to help you in order to choose your classes and make sure your academic journey is one that suits you best. In addition to academic benefits, we have exciting leadership opportunities for you. And this is where the, you know, the term leadership in our name comes from. We want to make sure that you're the leaders of tomorrow. And so a part of that is our leadership course curriculum that we have. And so you'll probably have noticed if you look at our course curriculum already that there's this leadership course one, two, and three listed there on the curriculum. And I wanted to go over what those leadership courses are going to look like with you. During fall quarter, you're going to take a course called Leading From Within. Now, Leading From Within is going to teach you a lot about how to, kind of what your own personal leadership style is. There's going to be a lot of self-assessment tools. There's going to be a lot of looking within yourself to figure out what you want to lead and how you want to lead and really just determine that, that mental image of yourself. And so, again, it's going to be a lot of self-reflection and a lot of figuring out how you want to use your leadership skills to benefit wherever you be a part of. In winter quarter, we'll talk about leading others. And so we're going to shift from a within perspective to an outside perspective. So this is focused more on how you can talk to other people, how you can interact with other people in order to be a leader with them. And so this will help you work really well in team settings. This will help you figure out how to solve solutions. This will help you be aware of people's work styles, people's issues, and, and really find a way to, to leverage your team as best as possible. And so again, shifting from looking within to looking to others. And the final course you'll take in spring is called Leading Change. And so one of the hardest parts about being a leader just in general in our society is figuring out how to make long-lasting and impactful change. And so Leading Change takes what you learned in the previous two courses and really, again, leverages those so that way you can make impactful change in the community and it will really help you figure out ways in which you can do that. And so this involves a lot of interactive participation with your peers and also some really, really awesome leaders that we'll get from outside the UCI community to come and, 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 and talk to you and interact with you personally. And that's a bit of a summary, but I wanna, I'll go into that here in our leadership events. And so as a part of all three of these courses, we have some really awesome interactive participation for you and extracurricular things that you can do as a part of these courses that we think are gonna be really, really great opportunities for you to enhance your leadership skills and really just to grow as a person. And so some of these include this. So again, I said we have events each quarter for you to attend. We're going to bring in business, community, and academic leaders outside the UCI community, and even sometimes within it, in order to, again, give you a personalized interaction with these people so you can learn from them, so you can grow from them, and make connections with these people in order to, to, to not even just network, but learn how to become a leader in today's society. And so in addition to that, you get backstage views of Places like Disney, Mazda, Blizzard, et cetera, all these places are nearby, they're right in the heart of Irvine, and you get a chance to look at things that people never get to see in their lifetimes, right? So this is a really, really awesome, and I this sounds so exciting to me that I want to be a part of this, and I'm actually kind of jealous that you all have the chance to be a part of this as well. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about applying, and, and keep these leadership opportunities in mind, because you really are, you're never too young to be a leader in today's community. And so we hope you take that to heart and we hope you consider that when moving forward. Another part of the Antietam Leadership Academy are our exclusive extracurricular activities that you get a chance to be a part of. And these are a little more on the social side of things, but still really fantastic opportunities for you to learn and grow as a part of our program. 
The first one of those is our Inside UCI series. Now, Inside UCI is a really awesome opportunity because this is where we bring faculty, professors, and really just prominent figures from the UCI campus to come and give talks and lectures about their journeys to how they got to where they are today. And this is great because it allows students to branch out a little bit from their major. It allows them to see kind of what the world has to offer and really kind of determine where they want to take their careers as well, because there's an opportunity here to really learn from people that are successful in their fields, right? Um, and you also get a chance to network with these people and maybe even talk to them afterwards. We've had students as a part of Inside UCI uh, who have gotten research right there and on the spot. And so if any of you are interested in research or really interacting with our UCI faculty, this is a great opportunity for, me to, for you to do so. And as opposed to me talking too much about this, I actually have a video that we put together for Inside UCI that we want to share. Now, I apologize if the audio gets out of sync a little bit. Really, the important part is what the students are saying. The visuals are more of a, um, are more of a kind of a, a visual aid in a way. But we'll see if this is going to work for us. Okay, so apologies for the audio again. That video will be available on YouTube shortly. Uh, but we wanted to kind of show what students and even professors had to say about the Inside UCI series. And you'll see there, actually, I don't know if any of you recognize them, but Professor Gregory Weiss, oh, I'm not, the Professor Gregory Weiss was the one who actually learned how to unboil an egg. And so he, he gave and gave a talk to our students and is really, really excited to, um, was really excited to do so. I can't guarantee he'll be back this year, but this is the kind of example of the professors that we get to come and talk in inside UCI. So we showed the video, and now I want to talk about our Collegiate Life series. And so Collegiate Life is more, uh, I want to say, academic and career focused and career driven. And so in our Collegiate Life series, we have a lot of events focused more on maybe resume building or career building, or maybe you go on to learn about how to set goals, or maybe you don't know what you want to do in your college career and you want to learn a little more about majors. And so Collegiate Life events are going to be available to students as well. And these are really, really important to, again, aid students in their journey and make sure that they're set up for as great a success as possible in the next three years of their college career and even beyond that. And then lastly, we have our academy mentor events or our freshman mentor events is what they probably should be called. And our freshman mentor events are going to be, again, probably a little more social based. We have a team of freshman mentors that are going to be specifically trained to aid you in your transition into UCI and beyond. These are students that have been there before, not in the program, but are UCI upperclassmen. And so they, they know the ropes of UCI. They, they know kind of the, the ins and outs of uh, what's 
you know, maybe places to eat or places to study or just really just ways to have fun at UCI. And they're going to be the ones planning these, these lovely events for you. And we hope that you can kind of interact with each other and make connections that will last a while. And so look forward to these academy and freshman mentors, and we hope that you get a chance to interact with them because they're really, really fantastic people. And then lastly, we want you to have a close-knit close excuse me, cohort experience here in the Antietam Leadership Academy. One of the awesome parts about this program is that you all are going to be going through it together as a small, you know, close-knit unit. And so as a part of the community, we want you to have a collaborative class environment. And so again, as I mentioned earlier, in these giant 400 person classes, it can be hard to feel like you really belong. It, it oftentimes can feel maybe that you're, again, just one in the crowd. In the anti Leadership Academy, we want you all to interact with each other and grow together and really help each other out and make sure that you, you know, collaborate with each other and, and enhance each other's success in a way. You also will have and you will most likely make lifelong connections here as a part of the Anteater Leadership Academy, excuse me. You not only will make connections with your peers, but also these fantastic leaders that we're bringing in to interact with you. And you can make, you know, network with CEOs even, or even just really strong leaders in the community. This is your chance to make those connections that will last for the rest of your life. And then, all in all, we want you all to experience UCI together. As I've mentioned, this is the first year for the program, and so you all are always going to be able to share this experience. You are always going to have the shared experience of going through the program and going through the Anteater Leadership Academy as a whole. That's very important and very cool that you always be able to have a chance to say, hey, I was the first graduating class from the Anteater Leadership Academy, and I really, really cherish that experience. And the friends that you make there will also be able to say that as well. And all that is for half the cost of normal tuition, uh, which is really cool and just an awesome benefit for you as incoming students. And you get all of these benefits, plus even some that you may discover on your own. And so at this point, I want to get into some of the frequently asked questions that we have about the program to maybe ease some of your confusion a little bit. And then after this frequently asked questions section, I want to open it up to all of you to ask questions because I'm sure there's quite a bit. I've gone over a lot of information in a small amount of time, and so feel free to do that. And I'll show you how to do that after I go through these questions here. And so the question, one of the most common questions we get is, so there's no need-based financial aid for the Leadership Academy? And the answer is yes, that is correct. And so there's no need-based financial aid available for students in the ANSI Leadership Academy. But, you know, that being said, if you need, or if you already have campus-based scholarships, um, they are still available if you receive them. And these include things like the, the region, region scholarship, you know, the Chancellor's Award, et cetera. And so if, the, if you have some of these, these are all still available if you receive them, and so you can still use those towards your tuition. And the next most common question we get is, so there's also no on-campus housing? And the answer to this is also yes, there is no on-campus housing available for students. But this, we have a lot of options for students who are looking for off-campus housing if you need it. And the first is CAPI apartments. And CAPI is, has been gracious enough to provide agents for our incoming students in order to kind of place them in housing off campus that they see fit. So they'll be able to kind of facilitate the process for you and make sure that you have a little bit of guidance as far as finding which place would suit you best off campus. And CAPI apartments are fantastic. I have lived in a lot of the communities like Cappy Apartments here in Irvine, and you really are getting top class apartment style living. Um, and so look forward to that if that's something that, that intrigues you. And again, Cappy.com is the place you'll want to go for that and contact them. We also have a number of Facebook groups. These aren't official through UCI, but I personally have used these to great success, and a lot of my peers and uh, fellow friends have used these to great success. In fact, my current roommate now I found through these, <laughs> these Facebook groups. And so these are the titles of the ones that I'm currently a part of, and you can feel free to use these at your discretion. Basically, these are like giant forums and message boards for you to look for people, and, they'll, and people will post on these sites asking for roommates, asking for specific, you know, if people want to move in together, et cetera. So I would, I would recommend taking a look at these and seeing if you can, if you can find anything and then using that as well. And then lastly, our official off-campus housing network is actually offcampus.housing.uci.edu. And this is very similar to the Facebook groups I just mentioned. You basically will log in and create a guest account and you'll input your preferences as far as how long you want to live, who you want to live with, you know, your, your certain behavioral preferences, et cetera, and then you'll basically be matched as far as how, uh, to, to people that 
match your specific, uh, I want to say, preferences in a way. So these are a, a few options for you to utilize at your discretion if you're looking for off-campus housing. Obviously, if you don't need off-campus housing, this does not apply to you. But for those of you who do, here are some things to look at as well. Another question that's common that we get is, do I need to pick classes before June 30th? And the answer to this is actually no. You don't need to pick classes right now. If you want to enroll in our program, you just need to enroll in the program by June 30th. You're actually going to pick classes at the current spot you've enrolled into, which is the same as all the other students, right? So don't worry too much about figuring out your exact curriculum right away. If you think this is going to be a great fit for you, you can just enroll in the program and then figure out exactly what your academic path will look like at the spot. So hopefully that takes a little bit of pressure off of some of you. And then the last question I have, which relates to the previous one, is we've recommended that students attend SPOP 9 or 10 as a part of the academy. And if you're not in SPOP 9 or 10, is that okay? And the answer is absolutely yes. If you're not in 9 or 10, that's not a, a game breaker. You're not going to, it's, it's not an issue. Just contact SPOP directly to edit your reservation if you really want to at orientation at uci.edu. But if you can't attend SPOP 9 or 10, which is relatively common, you just notify us via email and we will ensure that you receive all the necessary information that you need in order to, uh, you know, proceed accordingly. And at this time, I want to ask if anyone has any other questions. And so what you can do is I'm going to actually stop sharing my screen right now and look at the chat box. Um, and so me and Patty will handle these as a tag team. And so if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box on your WebEx screen, and we'll do our best to answer them one by one. So let me stop sharing my screen now and look at some of the questions we have. Yes, let me collapse this. So. We currently have a question that says, will be there be more classes added to the current list found in the UCI Leadership Program FAQs? They currently do not see enough to fulfill the requirements they would like to take, like languages, biological sciences, advanced math, and physics. And so I'm actually going to give this one over to Patty to answer this. Hi. So right now, there is an updated list of courses on the Anteater Leadership Academy website that has been added to since last week. So if you haven't checked that out in the last week, I would encourage you to check back in there. Uh, specifically, we've highlighted a pre-health track, so a STEM-focused track uh, that would give students a sense of progression uh, that other students, all UCI students who are on that path, take their first year. Other than that, the courses are actually going to be in development over the summer. And what I mean by that is after we have settled our entering cohort of academy student, uh, student academy participants, we can tailor the course needs relative to the majors that we have represented. Uh, but primarily the focus is going to be on general education requirements. And for the vast majority of majors, those uh, courses, that curriculum, is an advisable curriculum for that first year. It will satisfy breadth uh, requirements of the university. However, there are some majors, uh, engineering, for example, ICS, maybe some others, where there may be uh, a freshman requirement that, depending on enrollment size, might have to be uh, taken with the uh, general population. So we are flexible as we move through the summer and ensuring that the curriculum that is available is one that will ensure that students can progress through their major on time. So that is the fundamental principle that we're operating under no matter what. Um, for experience purposes, we really want to keep it as focused on gen eds as possible, but no major will be um, stuck with a first year where they can't satisfy requirements uh, in order to progress uh, on time. So hopefully that addresses that question. Uh, so in general, we want to keep that open uh, as we can tailor to the final registration profile. Second question, how many students will be in this program? We are um, imagining a 300 to 400 person enrollment uh, for the program. So we're tracking right now close to that. Uh, we really won't know until the, the next uh, several days, especially as we run these information sessions, 
the number of registrants has been picking up per day in the last several days. So, but just to give you a sense, that 300 number-ish is really what we're aiming for in terms of the optimal experience. I'm going to turn it back over to David for these next questions. And thank you, Patty. And so the next question that we have in our queue is what does SPOP stand for? And I apologize, I didn't make that very clear. And so for those of you who don't yet know what SPOP stands for, SPOP stands for Student Parent Orientation Program. It's our campus-wide orientation that is required of all students. And you likely have already signed up for a SPOP already. If you haven't, then go check orientation.uci.edu, which is the website for orientation. But that's kind of be what, what SPOP would stand for. So hopefully that clears things up a little bit. It's an awesome program. I was very involved with it as a student here, so I hope you have fun. The next question is, I signed up without knowing about the no need financially, and so how would I go about leaving the program? And so that is a great question. So if you're looking to unenroll, if you've already signed up the, for the, uh, the program and everything through our website with that little form fill you filled out, that's okay. Uh, just by June 30th, make sure you send an email to us at anteaterleader at ce.uci.edu, and I'll actually type, is there a way I can type this in the, the chat box so they can see it? It'll be up later, but... Um, Send all participants. Okay, so I'll type this here. Ant eater, leader, that's Keter. L -E -A -E David, yeah, you should be able to just put in the chat box. Yeah, I got uh, to it. everyone. So everyone will be able to see it. To all participants. Yep. Perfect. I just sent the message to all participants, I believe, with the email address there. And so please feel free to email us there if you look to looking to withdraw, especially if you did not know that the program did not have on off camp or on campus housing or if you did not know the program did not have need-based financial aid. Those are the two common occurrences. And feel free to email us there and let us know, and we'll be happy to oblige that request. So the next question is, will students be taking the program with the other general student population, or is it just with the same entering cohort of students? And so, as I mentioned, we want to have a, uh, a very unique cohort in this program. And so the answer to that question is the class that they will be taking will be specifically with these incoming students in the anti Leadership Academy. And so, no, they will not be taking classes with the general student population. They will just be taking it with the cohort of students that they're with. That being said, as I mentioned also, the student life opportunities are still very much available. And so if you're worried about students not being integrated with the, the main campus, really the, the opportunities are still all there for them. And part of the way that I felt like I was a big part of campus wasn't in classes. It was in doing those extracurricular activities. It was in getting becoming involved in student organizations and student life and getting that aspect of my UCI career down rather than just in courses itself. And so we want the academic experience to be very, very you know, intimate, very small, and have a chance for students to feel like they're getting the most out of their experience. If they want to really get heavily involved in the greater UCI community, the opportunity is there for them as well. And so the next question is, how many units are required by quarter? And I'll have Patty correct me if I'm wrong about this, but you are taking three classes per quarter, which adds up to about 12 units, plus the additional leadership course, which isn't unit qualified. And so really, you'll be taking 12 units per quarter. And I get make a nod, but that's correct. So good. And then the next question is, is involving how to uh, about on-campus housing. And so, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have on-campus housing available for students in this program. And so if you absolutely need on-campus housing, this may not be the best fit for you. I would recommend if you've already signed up you know, for this program, you may want to also send an email to that email address I sent to all participants to let them know. Let's see if there's anything. I'm, I think I'm getting a few. Oh, yes, there's more. Um, OK. So the, the next question is, technically we're not UCI undergrad students until sophomore year. Do you want to take this one, back? Sure. Hi. Uh, regarding the question about uh, technically being undergrad students, uh, we still consider you UCI students. You're getting a complete UCI student experience, all the student life, uh, activities, resources, et cetera, uh, counseling. With respect to your enrollment status, that is true. You will be considered a sophomore when you return to the general population matriculation after the, the year of the academy has been completed. So that is correct uh, from an enrollment status standpoint. But we do want to make sure that students understand that their first year while they're in the academy, they are full UCI students. We are not limiting your access to anything that your um, friends and and uh, others that you know who are freshmen are experiencing. The next question, when 
designing the courses, will AP class, yes, and previous college classes be considered? Absolutely, and that sort of ties into my earlier remarks regarding the ongoing development of the curriculum. This is another feature that we have to analyze carefully once we have that settled a group of enrollees, how much AP credit is out there. Uh, how many students will already meet the writing requirements, et cetera. So we're tracking that right now, and we'll continue to do that analysis. And based on what we find out there, we can design the curriculum to respond to uh, what we're seeing the needs really are. Uh, can I still get a food program at UCI? Absolutely, yes. And so if that answers that question, yes, you could still get the food program. Uh, Campus on-campus housing is not provided because this is a program that is being hosted through the Division of Continuing Education, and on-campus housing is not available for uh, students in continuing education. So that is the reason. And please clarify the student deferment aspect. If, if I was considering transferring schools at the end of freshman year would this deferment status affect the process? So if you're asking if you're considering transferring to a different university at the end of your year in the academy, would it impact you adversely or you know, change how another institution would view your application? No, you will be receiving full course credit for your curriculum, so you'll have those 24 units, um, I'm sorry, uh, 36, 12, <laughs> 12 times three, 36, <laughs> 36 by the end of your first year in the academy with a transcript, uh, and that would be what you would submit to an institution. Uh, you would be prob you would likely be evaluated as a transfer student, uh, which would happen anyway if you were a first year academy student. So, no, it it wouldn't uh, adversely impact it. You would be uh, applying as a sophomore if you indeed were looking to transfer to a different institution. And I'm going to turn it back to David for this next question. So the next question is, will we have an event or gathering in order to for all of you to meet each other? And the answer to that is, I, I, there's nothing currently planned for before the program actually begins. I know when the program is in session that definitely there's going to be events for everyone to get together and get to know each other. That will likely be a part of the Academy Mentor events that I was mentioning earlier. The, we really want people to get to know each other, and especially in a group that's going to be about 300 students. You know, that might be about, depending on your high school, that might be very really smaller. It's not like half the size of your graduating class, right? And so there's a chance for you to get to meet pretty much everyone in this program, and that's really cool. And so we want to be able to have that opportunity. I recommend if you want to have an event gathering for people before the program actually begins, the the Class of 2021 Facebook group is a fantastic place to meet new people. And so if you if you want to check that out, um, on Facebook, that's great, and you can even set one up yourself, and that, and that would be a good leadership step for you in the first, uh, you know, first steps of this program, right? And so, actually, looks like a list just reset. Let me see if I can get back down to where we were before. Um, so the next question is, are there any sources for scholarships sponsored by the program? I, not at this time, no, not sponsored by the program. As I mentioned, there were campus scholarships that, like that if you've already received those scholarships, those are available. But unfortunately, no, there's no scholarships currently sponsored by this program. I'm not sure whether that will be the case in the future, but for now, I'm going to have to say no. The next question is, can a student take more than 12 unit pay, units per quarter and participate in summer program? So let me answer that first question, that second question first, actually. So if you're looking to participate in a summer program like Freshman Edge, which is hilarious because I'm actually the, the, the lead for Freshman Edge here on campus, and the answer is yes, you can absolutely take part in Freshman Edge. We really want to actually encourage that for students who want to, you know, start their UCI careers early, and we'll make it work with you to ensure that the, your your classes for Freshman Edge don't overlap with the ones that are going to be you're going to be taking in the Anteater Leadership Academy. Um, as far as taking more than 12 units per quarter, it's a little tougher. I'm going to say no as of right now. Um, I, I, I would say that this is probably something you can do. Yeah, we don't, we don't advise that at all, actually. We want to make sure that you're, you're, you're set for success. And actually, if you look at the next question, which is more of a statement, um, I was incorrect. So students receive three units for University Studies 84, which are the leadership courses. So they're going to, it looks like they're going to be receiving units for leadership course, which will put you at about 15 per quarter. That's, that's about as high as you want to go, I want to say, for your first year, especially as someone who's been there before. 
15 units is quite a bit. It's, uh, we actually recommend students take an average of 12 during their first academic year, which is why we have the 12 units per quarter limit. If you take anything more than that, things start getting a little, little tough for as far as how to balance it all. And especially for those of you who are, or for all of you who are coming from a high school setting to a college setting, we don't want to encourage that too much. Here, I'm going to give it to Patty. I do want to address, um, though there are some majors, I'm thinking of engineering in particular right now, where you may be, in fact, taking more than 12 units uh, because of requirements in that first year. So there may be certain circumstances where uh, 12 units, uh, it will exceed that. But as David was just mentioning, we even to uh, regularly matricula matriculating students advise 12 units per quarter in that first year. So. What we're trying to do is replicate in every possible way the academic experience in terms of progression. So again, fundamentally, we just keep going back to this program will not impact time to degree or progression through the major. So that is the guiding principle no matter what. Uh, does the program conflict with CHP? We are actually meeting with CHP leadership currently to figure out how um, we can incorporate that CHP first year experience. I do have to sort of put a pin in that and say, let me get back to the CHP students. Uh, we are in ongoing conversations about that experience. So the question about getting behind, I think we've addressed that. And I'm gonna bring it back to David for the next spot question. So the next question is regarding SPOP. Uh, the question is, I registered for SPOP 4 before I saw the Anteater Leadership Academy, and will I be able to transfer my payment to SPOP 9, et cetera? Oops, and we just lost the question. Let me get back to it. Um, and so I mentioned this a little earlier in our Q&A. If you're not in SPOP 9 or 10, that's okay. You're not going to miss anything. You're not going to be at a detriment if you're not attending those. We just – we set aside space in those specific SPOPs for students to attend, and that's why we recommend it, so that way you get a chance to interact with people. But – if you're not in that particular spot, that's fine. You'll, we just let us know, and then we'll be happy to provide all of what's available during those spots to you during the spot that you're actually in. And so we don't want you to feel like you're missing out on anything in spot 9 and 10. And so just let us know, and we're going to do our absolute best to provide all the resources for you in those specific, specific spots. And so the next question is, what do you mean by all this for half the normal tuition? So the actual breakdown of our of the tuition fees is going to be on the website, and I'll send that to you here. It's very similar to the email address that I sent earlier. It's just anteater leader. No, I can't type right now. Leader.ce.uci.edu. That's the website for the Anteater Leadership Academy. If you look at cost, it actually breaks down a tuition cost. So it is literally half tuition. Um, and that the tuition cost that you normally pay is cut in half. Um, and so I, I don't know the exact numbers at this moment in time, but if you go to our website and check out cost, you'll be able to see the full breakdown there. Yeah. Okay. With the, respect to the question of potentially being a double major, it is still possible insofar as being a double major really is something that you would engage in as you approach or enter, you know, begin your sophomore year. Uh, this is something even your academic advisor would uh, put out there. The first year in particular, it would be uh, critical that you just satisfy those general education requirements uh, as efficiently as possible in that first year to leave yourself that latitude and flexibility to take required courses of those two majors. So yes, it would be possible. Uh, and the best way to do that is by getting your general education requirements satisfied uh, right up front. The next question, I'm losing track, where are we? Okay, does this mean, oh wait, financial aid? Can I use financial aid given by UCI for this program? You cannot use need-based financial aid program. Uh, Cal Grants, I would recommend talking to, giving a call to the Office of Financial Aid and Scholarships. There is a um, process by which a Cal Grant may be deferred to the following year, but uh, I would advise calling the Office of Financial Aid and Scholarships directly. Uh, but just to reiterate, if you do have an on-campus scholarship, like the Chancellor's Excellence or Regents, you can retain that but need-based aid is not available, unfortunately. Does this mean all people in the program live off campus? Yes, it does. And just a note, if you haven't been to UCI's campus, 
we have a lot of housing, uh, off-campus housing, uh, all around. That's that's really close by, uh, within walking distance even. Uh, it's just the way that Irvine is set up. Uh, the entire community was really designed to be very walkable. Uh, and I just, if you haven't seen the campus, I just wanted to make mention of that. So the next question is the pre-health track. Yeah, the information about that is just if you go to our website and look at the course listings, we've highlighted the courses that are requisite for a pre-health uh, preparation. And that would be the same progression that any student would be taking if they were interested in, in that um, curriculum, that kind of curriculum. Looks like we've addressed all of the questions that are in the Q&A section. And I'm going to give it back to David for a moment. So I did get a question in the all panelists section, I'll try my best to answer here. And so it, it's asking, so students are on their own to find housing and they thought that leadership themed departments were going to be made available or arranged for students. And so this is what I was referring to with, with CAPI apartments, right? And so they're going to have actual agents that are available in order to to sort of facilitate the housing process in a way. I don't know necessarily that, the, necessarily that there's going to be leadership themed apartments, but there's definitely the ability for students to get assistance in finding apartments off campus. And so they are, yes, you are technically on your own. If you want to do it completely on your own, that's fine. But we do have the CAPI residence agents that will assist you in kind of finding a place that best suits you in the area. Um, okay, so there's another question that says, I may be mistaken, but I was informed that we are to be received, receiving a free meal plan and a parking pass. And so the free meal plan thing, I, I, I cannot confirm at this time. I don't believe that's, that's in the works. Yeah. It sounds like there might be meals that are included in the leadership component, but I don't, I don't have full details on that quite yet. So I would be on the lookout for that. And as far as a parking pass is concerned, we ask that students enroll ahead of the June 20th deadline in order to, to receive it. Today is June 21st. And so, yeah, so that, that unfortunately has passed, but why don't we have to tell our Patty talk about this. With respect to the parking pass, we are actually um, considering expanding uh, or extending rather the deadline for that. So yesterday was the date that we had uh, indicated as the deadline for registering to receive that pass, but it looks like we'll be extending it. So look out to your emails today or perhaps tomorrow. Uh, once I can absolutely confirm that, we will be sending out an email announcing the extension of um, the parking pass. And I also want to note that there's also, um, if a bus pass is preferable or, you know, it makes more sense for your circumstance, then you can opt for that instead. So it's really a transportation um, credit, so either for parking on campus or for an Orange County bus pass. And there's a question, uh, are the class schedules taking into account that participating students will have to commute? Yes, we are taking that into consideration, uh, and I'll just say more broadly, we are thinking about all facets of the student experience and planning the courses and the timeframes in accordance with those um, expectations. But as students think through, as students who have registered think through uh, concerns that they have about getting here and what that's going to be like, I would encourage you to put just address them when you're talking with folks uh, as you're completing registration so that we can be sure that we're being sensitive to those and accommodating as we are able. Can they uh, can students participate in research? Absolutely. You're, you're still a UCI student, again, with access to all of our academic resources, just like any other uh, regularly matriculating student, for example. You can go to the Europe office, the uh, Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program office. Let them know, as any freshman would do, I'm interested in research. And they will advise on how they encourage first-year students to uh, prepare themselves well to engage in uh, research as an undergraduate. Am I missing any questions? I believe, like okay I believe they've been addressed. If you didn't get your question answered, um, please feel free to send the chat now. I, I may have missed it for the ones, those of you who sent it to me via host only. I think we answered, I looked through it and I think we answered the vast majority, if not all of them. But if there's still some areas of confusion, 
feel, feel free to, to send a summary of what your question is now. I'm happy to answer it. Right. So I uh, I just sent a new email, uh, ntheaterleader at ce.uci.edu. That is the correct one. So I apologize that that first one I entered wasn't correct, but make sure you include ce.uci.edu at the end there in order for it to work. So the the question about are we still going to be taught by the primary professors, and how do you how do you know whether or not housing would be more expensive living on campus? And so do you do you want to take it? Sure. So with the question regarding professors, yes, we are UCI instructors, uh, professors at every ladder rank, uh, full-time lecturers are the faculty who will be teaching the courses. So we're not sort of subcontracting uh, faculty or instructors from outside of UCI. These are all UCI instructors. Uh, how do we know whether or not housing will be more expensive? Well, there, that really varies, right? That absolutely depends on what you're looking for out, out, you know, off campus. I'll be honest with you, there are some students who choose to live off campus because for whatever living arrangement they set up, it can sometimes be less. Uh, so sometimes students will pursue that because of the number of roommates they, you know, want to live with or where the apartment is located or the facilities that it has. There's obviously a great range. Uh, so that's really an it depends kind of uh, question, uh, answer to that question. Does the housing application get canceled? Yes, and your $350 deposit would be refunded. And no need based financial aid. I'll just um, say this a different way. There isn't need based financial aid uh, available because the tuition has already been reduced by 50%. We are not able to add on to that need based financial aid to cover that remaining uh, cost of tuition and the student fees. So if you are already uh, receiving need-based aid, if you've been packaged, if you've received a financial aid package, those, uh, those financial aid resources would be canceled. Again, the scholarships that you may have with, that are campus-based, like Chancellor's Excellence or Regents, would not be canceled. That will stay. Uh, loans, you would not be eligible for federally-backed student loans, such as Stafford but you would be able to apply for private loans uh, through a bank, for example. So the program is recognized uh, as a legitimate educational expense for purposes of private lenders. So you could uh, access loans that way, but not through the federal government. So hopefully that addresses that question. I'm pausing a moment to see if any more come through. Not seeing one at the moment. I'm going to turn it back to David. So it looks like we may have answered everyone's questions. And so, oh, no, we get one more. <laughs> so can you clarify how the tuition process is going to work if you join this program? Yeah, so I'm going to give this back to Zal or Patty. I hope I'm, I'm not entirely certain what is being asked, but I can imagine it's probably asking about billing, maybe. Um, you would be billed quarterly, just as any other student would uh, be billed. So the tuition, again, is that 50% of normal campus tuition. The student fees are the same, uh, because you're accessing all the same student resources. So hopefully that answers that question. How would my housing application be re-entered if I'm already in the program and would like to unenroll? If you would like to unenroll in the program, we have not canceled any housing applications as of yet. Um, the housing office is keeping track of current registrants, but we have not actually taken any action uh, there. So now a bunch of questions are coming in. But, um, to clarify, if a freshman major course is requirement, required, they will be able to take. Yeah, so again, you might not see that on the course list currently, because we are working with those individual schools like engineering or ICS, for example, that have specific first year requirements to see how best to deliver those courses. Uh, and a lot will depend on the final registration group, uh, the number within the uh, anti Leadership Academy. So if it turns out to be the case that it makes more sense for a student to take that required course with the general population, that would be 
a potential outcome. So in general, you would not take courses that are part of the um, uh, main campus, but there may be an exception uh, if that is the only uh, mechanism by which you can stay uh, on track with that major. So we are kind of leaving that uh, as something we have to develop once we know more fully the profile of the entering group in the uh, Leadership Academy. Is it possible to get a complimentary shuttle pass? Um, campus shuttle is already complimentary. So the bus pass is for Orange County Transit Authority, and free parking is on-campus parking. And another question, if you're done with most GEs through APs, will you be allowed to venture out and get courses? No, you would have to stay within the Antietam Leadership Academy for that first year. Um, so there would be potentially other classes that uh, would help you round out that first year experience. Uh, Typically, there are more requirements that you'll need to take just through breadth requirements. Uh, so I'm not sure that it would be typical that we would see students completely finished with GEs uh, that first year. But I will say that you're going to have close academic advising. So whatever your academic circumstance is, you're being counseled throughout very carefully. So our faculty, our staff for this program are committed to the student's success, absolutely, fundamentally. So we will work with you to um, address whatever your particular um, circumstances are. And the same question about financial aid has come up again. Um, how are students selected? Actually, it's available to California residents, all incoming California residents. That This program is welcome uh, to students who believe it would be a good fit for them. And there is a, a ask to repeat the answer for a question regarding status of a student's transcript for applying. Oh, okay. If for some reason you've decided to transfer to a different institution uh, for your sophomore year or even midway through your, your freshman year, your first year here, you're taking credit-bearing courses. Uh, these courses will be recognized by other institutions wherever you apply. You will receive a transcript from the D Division of Continuing Education at UCI, and those courses count as any others would uh, when applying to another institution. How difficult to change majors? Like any other first-year student, we expect that students change their minds a lot. Actually, about half of our incoming students will change their major which is, again, why the general education um, framework is really where we want to focus this first year so that students really will have that latitude available to them. And, you know, if you think about it in those terms, you know, a lot of students don't even declare until midway through their sophomore year. And if they still have gen eds to take, that really restricts what they can take in their major. So if you take your first year to get those requirements settled, you have a lot more um, just flexibility available to you as you consider other pathways uh, academically. There's a pause and questions, bringing it back to David. So we, we are very rapidly approaching our 1 p.m. time. I do want to say thank you for answering the questions or for asking the questions that you have. This is really good feedback for us as well to know what students are most interested in. Um, we're going to do our best to to you know, be as, as responsive on the customer service lines as possible, on the phone lines and the emails, et cetera. Again, if you have any questions, I believe the email I sent later or with anteaterleader at ce.uci.edu is a great resource for you to check out if you don't get things answered here, um, especially questions that, you know, maybe you didn't get a chance to answer or you didn't understand correctly. Those are ones that you'd answer, ask in the email, and, and we can send them a nice lengthy text reply to you as far as that's concerned. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close off questions right now, but thank you again, all, all of you, for joining us today. I hope we were both able to provide a little bit of clarification and excitement about the Antheater Leadership Academy, um, and we're looking forward to seeing some of you, if not many of you, in the fall quarter when you join us. So thank you so much, and Patty, if you want to... Yes, I wanted to say thank you as well, and whether you're coming in uh, as a Leadership Academy participant or a regular uh, freshman student, welcome to the Anteater family, and we're, as David said, very excited to meet you. Enjoy your summers, and we'll be in touch.
Thanks again for your time. Bye-bye.